I have another excerpt for you from The Art of Pilgrimage by Phil Cousineau. I could, do you see how this book is marked up? There probably isn't a page here that I couldn't read to you with great joy. But this one on page 107 really stopped me cold. Phil was very close to Houston Smith, a great teacher of world religions. And on page 107, in a chapter called The Way of Faith, Phil writes, Religious historian Houston Smith finds four aspects to pilgrimage. Okay, I'm sitting up, ready, one, two, three, four. What are the four? Because if it's true of a pilgrimage where you get on a plane, go to Roslyn Chapel in Scotland, which I was planning on doing this September, I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. It will happen at some point in my life, I promise. Scotland is calling, but whether or not it happens this September or not is not up to me. But I know I'm on a sacred pilgrimage right now as I am sheltering at home, as I'm in my little cloister <laughs> with this address. This is my monastery. I'm in my little cloister here going deeper within than I ever have and this is what I'm all about. This is what I teach. Deep Soul Writing, when it came out in 2009, was the introduction to all of you for how to awaken, activate, and have a conversation with that extraordinary voice within and listen and follow the guidance you receive. You know that book. <laughs> Writing Down Your Soul. This is what I'm all about. But even I, after 23 years of deep soul writing, I started in April of 1997, I'm flabbergasted by the depth of the conversations I'm having now with beloved vibration of Sophia, because I'm giving my prayer, deep soul writing, deep soul reading time, more time. There are times, there are days when I sit outside for three hours. Even I'm flabbergasted by, whoa, look at that. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. So I really want to know what Houston Smith, a man, a great, great teacher, understanding all the spiritual traditions. So he said there are four aspects to pilgrimage. Number one, singleness of purpose. Your why your sacred intent, your sacred desire. And right away, this alters this quarantine time. What's the purpose? What's the sacred purpose? Where can you put your focus and your attention for this three, four, five months, however long, and maybe longer? You know what they're saying about the second wave. <clears throat> All right. If I am in my cloister here for a longer period of time, it just means I have more time for my sacred purpose. So what is your singleness of purpose? Number two, freedom from distraction. We've got that in spades if we don't distract ourselves, right? Freedom from distraction. So this is why I am having the richest conversations of my life on my pages in Deep Soul Writing. Here's the journal I'm just wrapping up right now. Whoa, you won't believe what's in here. I, I can't believe what's in here. My next books are in there. <laughs> but I also have had an experience of this, freedom from distraction. When I was on an external pilgrimage, I took, it was the very first deep soul writing group I took. We went to Oaxaca and on episode 28, I do talk about it a little bit. But I had an experience of this freedom from distraction that I didn't understand. I was grateful, but I didn't understand until I got home. We were so blessed to be staying in this hotel in the hills 
the foothills of Oaxaca. No television, no radio, no newspaper, no nothing. Just the 13 of us, interesting that we were 13, the number of the divine feminine, the best food you've ever had in your entire life. We had the entire little hotel was ours. The hotel had a chapel. You ever been at a hotel in the United States that have a chapel? Had a chapel and this shaman would come, Hoshave, and lead us in ceremonies in the, I mean, you just could not have a more sacred, more magnificent pilgrimage than that trip in Oaxaca. And one evening it dawned on me that I was finally understanding what Eckhart Tolle wrote about in that Power of Now, which is a very cerebral book. And I'm not interested in, you know, getting me to think about, I want to have the experience. Well, I was having the experience of what this cerebral book is talking about. I was actually experiencing what it means to live in the now, the moment. I didn't know what was going on in the world. I didn't care what was going on in the world. I cared about looking into the eyes and having conversations with these 12 women and one guy. Hello, Ed. Um, and the food. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the prayers and the experiences and the deep soul. Right? Ah! I had no distractions. So when I went back to my room, I picked up a pen and I wrote, Dear God, I want to remember this when I get home. Help me remember what this feels like to be fully present in the moment when I get home. Well, I should know better. You place a request like that in deep, deep soul writing, in communion with the divine, and it's going to happen. When I got home, I'd been home three days or so, and I, I turned on the television to watch Oh, maybe it was So You Think You Can Dance or something. Some show I liked. I wasn't exactly a television addict, but there were a few shows that I liked. And the television was blank, black. And I'm click, click. And I thought, oh, phooey, I don't want to have to buy a new TV. My sister had given me the TV. I don't want to buy a new TV. I went, I... And then the next day, I turned it on again just to see if, you know, made like the computer it had maybe fixed itself. You know how that happened? Well, it hadn't fixed itself. And I came over and really looked at the, like the, the box. In those days, it was cable TV and you had a box. And I realized not only was the television broken, but the box wasn't working. And for a flash of moment, I was annoyed. And then I went, Oh, wait a second. I asked for this. I asked for this. I remember. I said, help me remember. And the very next day, I called the cable company and said, come and get this box out of here right now. Now, I still, obviously, I'm talking to you. I have the internet only for Zoom, for writing, for teaching, for email. But I haven't had a television now for 10 years this month. 10 years right about now. I think we came back on May 20th, so right now. And so, freedom from distraction. But now, even though I love having the freedom from the distraction of television, I'm noticing in this quarantine time, I have even greater freedom from distraction. I am deep soul reading, writing, thinking, pondering, staring off in space. I'm telling you, staring off in space is a sacred mystical practice. And consequently, the riches. Oof. All right, so Houston Smith says, number one, singleness of purpose. Number two, freedom from distraction. Number three, ordeal. Right? Travel's not easy. Well, there you go. COVID-19 is putting us all through an ordeal. There are incredible difficulties, like me not being able to be with my son graduating from law school today. And then number four, offerings. Okay, I get one, two, and three. 
what is offerings with relish he tells of the unexpected joy he felt when he first encountered the traditional Jewish custom of offering alms, A-L-M-S. A friend at Duke University gave it to him saying, my commission to you, Houston, is to give alms to the next Berkeley street person. When I asked Smith why human beings have practiced sacred journeys as far back as we know, he deliberates and then says, the fact is we are embodied souls. We have to act out our faith. So, okay, I can't go out on the street and give alms to the first homeless person I see, but the homeless people are still here. And I have found that I just didn't think of it as giving alms, but I am going online and giving PayPal friends and family money to people who I know are having difficulties right now financially. I just didn't realize that was giving homes. And I am um, ordering groceries now. I never did this before, but my son who lives in New York City said, mom, you're not leaving the house. You know, the people in New York City really understand. I said, okay, okay, okay. And so for the first time I'm ordering groceries on Instacart. And I found that although, oh Lord, it's expensive, I need to leave a large tip because that person, I don't know, I mean, they're probably working on minimum wage and tips, right? I want that person to receive this. I never thought of it as an own. And then he goes on to say, when he's talking about his external pilgrimages, there's something very peculiar about me, Smith adds disarmingly, is my compulsion to take something back from sacred places. From every trip, I have selected a stone that I brought back to place in my garden here in Berkeley. I don't even know where they are from after all these years, but I feel their power around here somewhere. Finally, there is the internal aspect of pilgrimage, and that's the internal pilgrimage we're all on right now. The counterpart to the exploration of the outer world, that's what it's all about, Smith, and concludes, are we doing this out of rote or out of devotion? Are you willing to enter this pilgrimage, this radical pilgrimage of transformation, this quarantine time as devotion? Isn't this a sacred opportunity to either find or expand your devotion to the divine, the divine feminine, to the sacred nature of your soul, to the axis mundi, the soul of the world. This is a time of devotion. This is a time of prayer. This is the sacred pilgrimage. And so we have singleness of purpose. You have to declare that for yourself. Freedom from distraction. You have to create that for yourself. Ordeal has been given to us offerings you can do that in some way it might be calling a friend you know is having a difficult time it might be sending gifts cards letters money it might be um, supporting a local bookstore a local restaurant i'm absolutely only everything i purchase right now is going to people, not organizations. So for example, everything I'm buying right now is on Etsy, E-T-S-Y. Anything I need for the house, I'm buying it from an artist, a person, online. Even, look at this, the, um, the hand sanitizer, instead of getting some commercial thing, which always, I think they're awful, I found this online. It's a hand sanitizer, herbal hand sanitizer made by a guy who calls his company Susquehanna Apothecary. I mean, right away, wouldn't you love to support a guy? So 
it's organic alcohol, but then he goes out in the fields and forages plants, aloe, <laughs> and this is light. It smells great. It feels great. I went back online and ordered four more. There isn't anything you can't get at Etsy. And you're supporting an artist, a person. My masks, I bought a couple cotton masks. I bought them at Etsy. So this is a small way in which you can offer your support with whatever financial capability you have to people, mom and pop, shops, stores, artists, bookstores. That's why we're buying our books at bookshop.org. And then we get to take a stone. Now, do you know what that stone is? I don't know my stone yet. It might come in a dream. It might come in deep soul writing. It might come listening to the birds outside. But at some point in this pilgrimage, I'm going to see a stone, and I'm using that term mystically, not literally, although you might live in a place where you can go for walks in the woods and you find a real stone. How cool is that? Come and put it on your altar. Whatever that stone is, you will have that symbol of the meaning of this radical pilgrimage of transformation for the rest of your life. So let it find you. Put it on your altar. This is what mine is looking like at the moment. It has my books. It has, of course, Jupiter, who's in retrograde right now. Mary Magdalene. I mean, I'm not going anywhere without Mary Magdalene. This is a wonderful bowl that Maggie Stoltz in uh, Virginia made in honor of Writing Down Your Soul. This is my, one of my mother's favorite pictures of Our Lady. This is the moon. This is Caroline. Look at this handmade rosary. Is this the coolest thing ever? This is a handmade, hand-dyed goddess rosary. And more, right? That's my altar. At some point, there'll be a symbol of this sacred pilgrimage. Maybe it'll be a phrase, a word, a poem. Maybe it will be um, a feather that I find on my little rosary walks in the evening. I don't know. Houston Smith didn't know when he went on physical pilgrimages, but eventually a stone would say, take me home, take me home, take me home. And a stone is waiting for you. And so is this book, The Art of Pilgrimage. And so is this beautiful conversation with Phil Cousineau, episode 28. And be sure you press on those little prayer bags and get your gifts. And then click on the Facebook group and come and tell us. What are you discovering about these four? Sense of purpose, freedom from distraction, ordeal. <laughs> and offerings. And then I guess you could say number five is the stone. Let's all share in this sacred pilgrimage together. It's all at janethunter.com slash 28.